Hello, my name is Dirk Fischer from Hilcher, and in this video tutorial I would like to explain the structure, the software structure of a Hilcher loadable firmware. Um, as a start I want to tie in with the dual port memory layout and the channel definitions. You remember this slide here where I explained the different communication channels inside the dual port memory as a window to the protocol stack, to the loadable firmware. Um, and here you can see we have a channel for Profinet, one for web server, one for OPC way. And what's behind these channels? What behind the dual port memory window? That's what I want to explain in the next slides. So here you can see a block diagram of both components. The host application maybe the NetX90 application site or an external host, and the loadable firmware from Hilcher running on the NetX90 communication site, in between the dual port memory, as shown on the previous slide. And here you can recognize it three channels, channel 0, 1, 2. These are the components inside the Hilcher loadable firmware, and that's what I want to present here in this video. Um, we have a lower level, the whole hardware abstraction layer as the interface to the network itself. This is a low level hardware, uh, close to the hardware. And here we have the higher abstraction layers, um, the interface to the application. And you remember the channel zero as a window to the real time ethernet stack, for example, Profinet, we need cyclic I.O. data communication as well as acyclic data communication which is handled by mailboxes both through the channel zero. On the firmware side we have a protocol interface which is a handler to receive data over DPM and transfer data to, to the DPM. And behind this interface we have the most important component, the protocol stack the industrial Ethernet protocol stack, real-time Ethernet, Profinet, Ethernet IP, and so on. And this component requires a TCP IP stack as a basis. So this is also a very central component in our firmware. Profinet depends on the TCP IP stack, Ethernet IP depends on TCP IP stack, but there are also direct links to the lower levels. For example, either cat uh, use more uh, uh, um, channel to the lower levels of the software. So that's the most important functionality to communicate over real-time Ethernet protocols. But there is more functionality inside our firmware. We have a second channel, channel one, which features also a mailbox interface. And this channel acts as a so-called Ethernet and web interface. So we have three kinds of functionalities over this channel. One functionality is so-called socket interface. You see this link to the TCP IP stack. So your host application has direct connection through this channel to the TCP IP stack. And it's possible to open sockets to communicate over sockets and use TCP IP or UDP based communication. In this case, you use the same IP address as the industrial Ethernet protocol. So you have the same IP address like your Ethernet IP device, um, same MAC address. So it's basically the same device and you can implement your own protocols. Another option is to bypass the TCP IP stack and directly access the network interface. So we call this raw Ethernet. In this case, you have to implement your TCP IP, UDP or whatever protocol on the application side, on host side, and you have this raw access to the network. In this case, you have a separate MAC address, your own MAC address, your own TCP IP address, um, so it's basically another network device beside the industrial Ethernet device. 
Uh, and a third functionality over this interface is a web interface, HTTP interface. So we have a web server running in our firmware. And this web server can forward HTTP requests coming from the network um, to the application through this channel. So whenever an external client like a web browser um, asks for a um, resource, an HTML page or a picture or whatever, um, the web server can forward this request to your application and you can provide the data. Beside this, the extended web server is also able to provide data directly from the flash memory. So if you use an external flash memory, you can create a file system there, you can store a lot of web content, PDF documents, JPEG, JavaScript, whatever you want, and the web server will provide this data to an external client. Only dynamic data might be requested to your application. There's another important functionality, and now another um, block of functionality is the IoT protocol um, stuff. So the IoT stack could be an OPC way server, could be an um, MQTT uh, stack, um, which also use TCP IP communication, of course. So you have this link from the TCP IP stack to the IoT stack. And to use MQTT OPC UA from your application, um, we added an abstraction layer. We added a, an object um, database, I would, would say, so you can create objects, you can write data objects, read data objects, and this is inside this net proxy interface. And the content of these objects are transferred through the IoT stack to the outside world. So an external OPC UA client can read and write these object data through this channel here. So in your application, you don't really bother with MQTT or OPC UA. This is really abstracted. You just deal with objects. And the same objects can be also delivered to the outside world via a web server adapter. So as we have a web server, you can view the content of these objects through web pages to the outside world. So it's a very convenient way. You have to maintain the content of these objects only once, and this content can be delivered by web page or by MQTT OPC way to the outside world. So this is basically the structure of, of a, a full-blown uh, NetX90 loadable firmware. And we have, we provide different uh, types of firmware with a different level of functionality. And this block diagram represents um, the full-blown version with all functionality inside. And we call this type four, uh, type four firmware. And there are other types with less functionality. For example, the IoT stuff can be removed. So we provide only two channels as an interface. Uh, we have the real-time Ethernet and we have all the Ethernet interface functionalities like socket interface, raw Ethernet and web access. And this web server can still provide data from the file system directly to a client. Um, and further reduction could be the removal of the extended web server and replace it just by a so-called basic web server. The basic web server is a um, device which can, uh, which can, will forward all kinds of requests directly to your application. The basic web server is not able to read a file system and provide content directly. So in this case, with a basic web server, you have much more work on the application side to, to create a web page. Yeah, and the different software types have different requirements on the hardware. So on the next slide, I show you a table which summarizes these different firmware types. And as you can see, the type 4, the full-blown version with OPC MQTT extended web server, 
requires external flash and external SDRAM. So we need more hardware components. Um, the flash layout is called use case C, which is explained in other video tutorials. Um, and in contrast to, the, to this um, firmware type, ty uh, firmware type 2, without the extended web store, without IoT protocols, um, we don't need external memory. So it's possible to have a smaller, cheaper hardware. So thank you for, for watching this video. Goodbye. <laughs>